Here's what a C++ file looks like on Emacs by default. Emacs has a built-in major mode for C and C++ called CC mode that gets enabled automatically when you open a C or C++ file. It does a lot of things like syntax highlighting, simple code formatting, and code navigation, but it's, a, it's missing a lot of useful features that most modern IDEs have out of the box. So how do we add those beloved red squigglies that tell us that we're doing it all wrong? The answer is language servers. Language servers report these errors and do a lot more. A language server is a program that provides language-specific features like code completion, syntax highlighting, and error diagnostics. Each language server offers slightly different features. The one we're going to use is called ClangD. So let's go and install that first. You can see installation instructions for your operating system on their website. If you're using Fedora, you can get it from the Clang Tools Extra package. Now that we've got ClangD installed, you can start using it in Emacs by going to your C++ file and running eglot uh, by hitting Alt-X eglot. So let's run that. Ooh. If you're using an Emacs version that's lower than 29, you'll have to manually install eglot first. Um, but now that we've got our language server running, we should be able to see those sweet, sweet squigglies. Now, before we take a look at some of the features we just enabled, let me try to explain how all of this works. I've mentioned that ClangD is a language server, and I've talked about what a language server is, but I haven't talked about what uh, about how a language server connects to a text editor like Emacs, Vim, or VS Code. It all works through the language server protocol, or LSP for short, and the piece that we just added called eglot is the LSP client. An LSP client instantiates a language server and communicates with it. The two big LSP clients in Emacs are eglot and LSP mode. I prefer using eglot because it stays lean uh, by integrating existing Emacs tools, and as of version 29, it's built into Emacs by default. LSP mode, on the other hand, is a bit heavier and comes with a lot of things that we probably won't need. So what happened when we enabled eglot um, is that Emacs saw that we were editing a C++ file, so it looked for the correct language server for C++, which in our case is ClangD. With our LSP client eglot now, now connected to the language server, ClangD, we can now reap all the benefits of ClangD inside of Emacs. You can see that the aspect ratio now has, red squig has a red squiggly line under it. And if I put my cursor over it, you, then you can see the error message in the mini buffer saying that we're trying to use an undefined or undeclared identifier aspect ratio. Let's fix that by uncommenting the aspect ratio and the red squiggly disappears. Let's look at the yellow squiggly under 400.1. It says implicit conversion from double to int changes values from 400.1 to 400. Basically saying that it'll convert it to int and it'll truncate that decimal. Uh, so let's just get rid of that warning by putting it back to an int. And then if you look at the mini buffer right here next to fly make, you'll see a, an orange one that basically indicates the number of errors that are in your file. Um, so if we scroll all the way down, we'll see this red squiggly on ray color. Let's uh, basically uncomment that function out again or back in again. And if you look down here, you'll see that it's zero. So there are zero errors now. You can confirm that by going down and seeing that ray color is no longer erroring out. Okay. Something else that I usually like to have a warning about is unused variables. So for example, if for some reason I hard coded 16.9 or 16.0 divided by 9.0 instead of this aspect ratio here. Um, divided by 9.0. I would hope that on this line where aspect ratio is defined, um, I'd get some sort of warning that this variable is not used. So this feature is basically not enabled by default in ClangD, but it is available in ClangD. 
And the way that we enable that is to go to the root directory of the project that you're working in. You want to make a dot clang D, uh, which is just the config file for clang D. And then you want to do compile flags. Just do add and do unused variable. Once you add that file with the compile flag, we have to reconnect to the language server so that it can detect the new uh, Clangd config. So if you just do eglot reconnect, it'll reconnect. And now we have that exclamation point at the left margin and aspect ratio is grayed out. And if we hover over it, then we can see that uh, it says unused variable aspect ratio. Not an error, but it is a good warning to be able to quickly see uh, variables that we're not using. Error diagnostics, pretty nice, uh, but let's look at some cooler features of eglot and clangd. If you want an exhaustive list of all the clangd features, then you can read more about them on the clangd website. The next feature we're looking at is renaming symbols. Let's take a look at this unit vector function. You can jump to its definition the definition of unit vector or any any definition of a function that's being used by hitting alt m but if you're using evil mode and you're in uh, normal mode then you want to use control right square bracket um, that takes you to the unit vector function definition and you can see down here in the mini buffer that we're now in a file called vec3.h now let's use the eglot rename command to rename this unit vector just to u vector uh, as an example. You can see that this is changed. And then we can save it. Let's go back. So we can go back to the exact spot that we jumped from to get here by hitting mod comma or alt comma. And we're now back in main.cc at the exact spot we were at before. And the function name has changed here too. So I'm going to save this. Amazing. Let's look at the next amazing feature, which is uh, automatically inserting include directives when you use functions from other files. So if we go up here, let's remove include ray.h. You'll see that ray has a red squiggly under it. To fix this, let's use the command eglot code actions. So alt x eglot code actions. So this shows all the available options to try and fix this error. In this case, there's just one suggestion, uh, which is to include ray.h. So hit enter, and then we'll see that it gets added to the list of includes in alphabetical order. So now for this next example, let's just purposely mix up uh, the includes. I'm just going to put vec3 at the top, obviously not in alphabetical order anymore. If we call eglot format, it puts it back in alphabetical order. Uh, and you can do this with any kind of formatting errors. Something else I want to note that you probably have noticed by now is that Documentation is shown in the mini buffer for anything that you place your cursor on. For example, right now the cursor is on ray color, and the mini buffer shows a description of what ray color is. It says here that it's a function uh, that returns a color type and takes parameter of type ray. I've noticed that it's a bit cumbersome to manually type out these eglot commands every time we need to use them. So like eglot code actions kind of uh, long to type every time that you want to fix a small issue. Uh, so I think this is a good time to set some key bindings for these commands. So go to your init file, Oops. init, let's go all the way down uh, and add this, um, add some key bindings. Eglot mode map. Uh, so let me finish this out. 
So we'll do control C L A for eglot code actions. We're using L to represent LSP and A code actions. Uh, and then next line, control C L R eglot rename. And control C L uh, F for format. Eglot format. Okay, so this is how I'm setting the key bindings for Eglot. If you don't want to use use package, uh, you would do it like this. You would use define key, Eglot mode map, KBD, control C L R for a rename. For example, uh, Eglot rename. Uh, and I'll put this in the description so you can just copy paste it. I'm going to evaluate this line so that we have these options now. So I'm back in main.cc. Let me get rid of ray.h again. Go under ray with the ray red squiggly. Cool. Let's try a new key binding for uh, code actions. So that's just control C L A. And we have this and it brings up the menu so it definitely works and does the right action cool the eglot command should be a lot nicer to use now the last feature that I want to briefly touch on is code completion basically you can hit alt tab to get a list of completion suggestions so let's just start typing something I'll do viewp Okay, I typed VUP and then I hit, hit Alt Tab. Uh, you can see that it completes to viewport underscore. Uh, and if I hit Alt Tab again, uh, it shows all the completion options. We can navigate through the options using Alt, uh, Alt Up or Down. Uh, oops. Alt Up. Oh my God. I'm going to hit alt down to select the first option and hit alt enter to uh, use the suggestion. Uh, as you can see, this is really clunky. I'm not a huge fan of this completion method, but I think completion modes in Emacs warrant an entire uh, video of its own. So I'm going to leave it at that for now. The last thing that I want to add is a hook to start eglot whenever I open a C++ file. Let's go to our init file again. Or let me delete this. Uh, let's go to our init file again. And what we want to do is we want to add a hook like this so that when we start C mode, we start eglot as well. And then you can evaluate this and you can open a C file, but Basically, this will make it so that eglot is automatically enabled whenever we open C++ file. And uh, that's it. We've basically configured Emacs to be a lean and functional C++ development environment, um, at least for the reading and writing part of development. We haven't covered how to build and run our program, but that's for another video or for you to figure out.